On August 16, 2020, the CZU Lightning Complex fire ignited. Two days later, the flames engulfed Big Basin Redwood State Park, burning over 97% of the park and destroying nearly every structure, including the park headquarters, campgrounds, and housing for park employees. Approximately 18,000 acres burned. Established in 1902, Big Basin is California's oldest state park. Visitors from all over the world travel here to experience the great outdoors, hike through the ancient coast redwoods, and camp under the stars. When the fire swept through the forest on August 18, 2020, the park was busy with the campgrounds full of visitors. For the people who worked in this park, it was unimaginable that a fire of this intensity could roll through this quickly. In just three hours, State Park's staff evacuated approximately 1,000 people from day-use areas and campgrounds. There were very few roads to get visitors out and fire crews in. Thankfully, everyone evacuated safely and without injury. Big Basin remains closed with no water, power, sewer, phone, or internet services available. Falling trees are a major concern throughout the park. As we mark the one-year anniversary of the fire, park officials are providing a look into what Big Basin is like today. Highway 236 is the entrance road to Big Basin and the first place where visitors view the park's old growth trees. And the difference now is profound. When you see the change in the canopy and the blackened trunks, you can almost feel the intensity of the fire as it traveled through the redwoods. But Big Basin is now starting to recover. It's amazing to witness. Redwood shoots are sprouting from fire-damaged trees. In fact, scientists believe nine out of 10 redwood trees will survive. Also, tan oaks, live oaks, and madrones are sprouting back from their bases. However, stands of Douglas firs didn't survive the fire. Some of the work that we're going to do here has to do with hazard tree removal. We're trying to reduce fuels for future fires, but we're also trying to maintain the ecological integrity here. We're actually leaving some of the largest trees on the ground because heavy wood on the forest floor is an integral component of old growth forest. And that's imperative for the health of the forest. One of the reasons the park remains closed to visitors is because dead trees create hazards. There is a lot of territory to cover. We're focusing first on the main roadways. Trails will be addressed in the future. The regeneration process will be long. It's going to look very different here for a very, very long time. And it will not look like the same big basin that visitors remember, at least not in our lifetime. This is Bloom's Creek Campground, one of the most iconic campgrounds in the park and representative of how the fire worked through these campground areas. Big Basin was a place for folks to camp year after year, generation after generation. You may have had a favorite site, but it's hard to recognize now. The fire destroyed pretty much all of the 220 campsites in the park. Here at Blooms Creek, right in the heart of the old growth forest, the bathrooms burned, and the bridge across Blooms Creek was severely damaged. All the bridges in the park burned. This loss is especially problematic because the structures also carried water lines, sewer lines, and in some cases, phone lines. The fire destroyed most of the utilities in the park. Infrastructure for electricity, clean water, and communications channels here remain destroyed. This hole in the ground was a restroom shower building. The rubble has been completely removed as part of the debris removal process. The only structure left in Blooms Creek is a dishwashing station that somehow is spared. Most of the hazard trees in this area have been taken out, so it's a lot thinner now compared to before the fire. Here's a pocket where there's actually old growth trees that the canopy was not lost. With green tops still left in place, there is hope these areas will provide critical wildlife habitat. However, most of the Douglas firs and understory trees were killed by the fire. We removed most of the hazard trees in this campground, first cutting down the small trees to make it safe to work here. We plan to cut the biggest hazard trees last, leaving them on the ground to add heavy wood to the forest floor. The wood will decompose, adding nutrients to the forest floor and providing habitat for a natural landscape that is in recovery. We are in the heart of Big Basin. Looking over here, you would have seen the historic park headquarters building, probably the most iconic building in Big Basin. 
campers would have registered for their campsites here. They were administrative buildings. Behind those buildings, a public bathroom. The stone steps will remain as a monument, but the entire structure burned down. What remained after the fire has been completely removed. The largest tree on the far side with a huge cavity is the Otto tree, one of Big Basin's most recognizable attractions. You can still see the old growth here on the entrance road of Highway 236. This would have also been where visitors could see a piece of the old growth that was cut to reveal the timeline of a tree that was approximately 2,000 years old. That burned up in the blaze as well. This area here where they're processing logs was the day's parking that provided access to many favorite trailheads. The entrance kiosk would have been in the middle of the road right here. This is where you would get your maps, talk to friendly park staff, and discover what there is to see in the park. The chimney you see before you was part of the lodge, one of the oldest buildings in the park. It and the headquarters building's stone steps are all that's left following the cleanup. Though all of the infrastructure here burned, we plan to leave remains including the chimney and stairs to remember and for future generations to experience this part of Big Basin's history. This was the Campfire Center, an outdoor theater with seating for 500 people. The stone stage and wooden superstructure created a cathedral impression among the redwoods here. Bathrooms and trailheads leading into the back country of Big Basin were located behind the Campfire Center. The Campfire Center sign survived the fire, featuring historic pictures of the headquarters building that completely burned down. Even though the stage is no longer standing, a picture of the stage will remain with the sign. Skyline to the sea, the sign for this popular trail remains intact, even though the rest of the trailhead was ravaged by the blaze. Nearby, we see the old growth loop coming from the day use parking lot. Probably one of the most popular short trails in the park, the path leads to beloved trees, including the mother and father of the forest, both of which survived the fire. The trail is not clear yet. Instead of cutting down the larger old growth to make this area safe, tree inspectors are making careful assessments to cut off dangerous branches with the hope of preserving and saving more trees. Local arborists with a passion for the redwoods and old growth are using these techniques elsewhere in the park. Their focus and dedication will save many trees and make a huge difference for Big Basin's recovery. When you pause to think about it for a moment, the story here is much bigger than a fire-damaged state park being reconstructed. We are the stewards of this land, and there are so many people who are passionate about Big Basin. We are standing at the beginning of the North Escape Road. This was the site of the historic store in Big Basin, as well as the Nature Museum, which was completely remodeled recently. There were a lot of administrative buildings here. We had a ranger office to the side there, along with parking. You can see from the trees right here, a lasting impression of the sheer intensity and magnitude of the fire. All of the canopy has burned out. We lost a large old growth here in the heat of the fire because of the fuel loading. And the buildings that were here burned incredibly intensely. This is the epicenter of the debris cleanup. The sites have been cleaned up with all the building debris removed. And most of the hazard trees are on the ground at this point. This just illustrates the level of effort it takes to actually process wood and reduce fuel mechanically in a forest of this size. We're only working around the developed areas, and it's taking hundreds of people working with very specialized equipment for months and months. We're standing on the entrance road to Little Basin. Little Basin is a California State Park's campground with a family-friendly atmosphere and part of the Big Basin Redwoods State Park. Little Basin was an idyllic natural setting to unplug, unwind, and enjoy the fresh scent of the coastal air and majestic redwoods. What we're seeing here is a beautiful meadow that would have had camping all around. Camping guests could sleep under the sparkling night sky, tucked away in a tent or in a rustic wood-sided cabin. All the structures located at Little Basin burned. Though this area had no old growth trees, and it's mostly smaller trees surrounding open areas, it still burned very, very hot, even though there was a lot less fuel. You can see the intensity and loss of canopy for most of these trees. And just like the majority of Big Basin, Little Basin remains closed as the land continues to grow and heal.
When the CZU Lightning Complex fire ignited, we had approximately 20 park employees and their families living in the park. In a remote park like this that operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, it has been critical to have staff available at all hours. When the fire tore through Big Basin, State Park's staff led to the safe evacuation of 1,000 park visitors, even as their own homes burned to the ground. They lost everything during that evacuation, but their primary focus was public safety. That's what they do. We are thankful for their dedication. We're standing on China Grade, the northern border of Big Basin State Park. From this vantage point, you can see all the way to the Pacific. You can see the lighter colored chalks ahead on the right, which are above Waddell Beach and Año Nuevo. To the left is the heart of the park where we just visited. You begin to sense for the scope of this fire from up here. The CZU Lightning Complex fires burned more than 85,000 acres in San Mateo and Santa Cruz counties. It was declared contained five weeks after it ignited and controlled on December 23, 2020. However, redwood trees have continued to smolder in Big Basin, even into the summer, reminding us that the path to recovery, regrowth, and restoration will be long and arduous. The establishment of Big Basin nearly 120 years ago marked the beginning of the preservation and conservation movement in California. And this park provided the vision for hundreds of other state parks we enjoy today. The Big Basin General Plan was updated in 2013 to define a vision for the park based on significant stakeholder and public input. The devastation caused by the CZU Lightning Complex fires in 2020 means we need to revisit this shared vision. Over the next year, the Reimagining Big Basin Project will engage the public and stakeholders to define a renewed vision for Big Basin. We will provide updates on the park's conditions and recovery efforts, share the challenges and opportunities of reestablishment, and seek input on the park's future. Together, we will create a vision for the future of Big Basin and guide the efforts necessary to reopen the park to the public.